Of course, America isn't a meritocracy. You only have to look around you to see that the system is weighted in favor of certain groups and massively weighted against others. You only have to remember the issue of race. Yet the key point is that Americans perceive that their society is in fact meritocratic. And there's a cruel logic to the whole idea of a meritocracy. Because if you genuinely believe that those at the top merit their success, you have to believe that those at the bottom must merit their failure. Jenny Lamont begs by the side of the road to feed her two children. What do you think when you see people like her? Do you think they've been unlucky? Or do you tend to assume that they have in some way brought it on themselves, that they're losers even? I think a lot of the middle class people and people that have money, yeah, they look down on you. When rich people come, they'll be rolling their windows up or they won't even pull their car up next to you. They don't want to have anything to do with you. So who are the people who help you most? Mexicans, <clears throat> Indian women, and a lot of women. But why do you think that is? Because they, they've been there and they know that you wouldn't be out there if you didn't need it. Thank you so much, ma'am. God bless you. Thank you. You have a nice day, ma'am. Thank you. So my husband much. and I were together for 26 years. And my husband recently died. I, I was a bookkeeper for a small company. I worked there seven years. And um, I lost my job. I came home from work. He was in a coma on the couch. I called the ambulance. Um, they took him to the hospital. He died not, uh, September 11th, uh, 02 of the year anniversary of the plane crash. And um, I went into a real bad depression because I was still at my job at that time. And at that point, you, you lived in a nice house? I had my own, own apartment, three-bedroom apartment. But it, I couldn't pay the rent, so I just recently got evicted. And I have to be out on the 13th of this month. So where are you living now? My father-in-law has let me stay in his basement. Well, when you need to feed your kids, you do anything. It's very degrading going out there, but it's, it's how I feed my kids. So. I don't care what the people said to me, or if they yelled at me, or anything. Thank you so much, ma'am. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, they don't know my story, so they don't know what's going on in my life. Are you surprised by what's happened to you when you look back on your life? Are you, are you shocked? How do you, how, do you, how do you think about what's happened to you? I try not to because I get depressed, you know, because I, everything I had it was great. My life was great. And I kind of lost it, like, within a month, everything was gone. From the middle of the 19th century, especially in the United States, perceptions of the relative virtues of the poor and the wealthy began to change. The possession of money began to seem less like a fortunate blessing and more like proof of moral superiority. a bit nervous about meeting Grover Norquist. He's one of Washington's most prominent neoconservative lobbyists. Can you make sure the front desk does not put calls through? So what do you see as the most fundamental ideas about American society and econ the economy? Well, it based the United States from day one, was founded on the basis that anybody could do and be anything he wanted to. Didn't matter who your parents were, didn't matter what they did. Uh, that you were in charge of your own future, and there's no ceiling, uh, and there's no floor. Uh, you want to be a bum, you can be a bum. You want to uh, accomplish great things, you can do that, it's up to you. Uh, the state's responsibilities are to provide for a free and open and just society uh, to execute murderers and uh, otherwise leave people alone. Why uh, shouldn't the state help the needy? Uh, because to do that, you would have to steal money from people who earned it and give it to people who didn't. Uh, and then you make the state into a thief. Why is it theft? To take money that you didn't earn? Uh, to... Could you give me one second? Could... Damon! Damon? Whatever you're doing, shouting over there, it comes right through the <clears> walls. <throat> Could you make sure people are quiet, because we're getting noise louder than just talking noises through the walls. 
You're suggesting that taxation is theft? Taxation beyond the uh, legitimate requirements of providing for justice is theft, sure. It strikes me that there's a lot less guilt towards the underprivileged in American society compared to in European society. Why do you think that might be? If you believe that somebody's property and wealth is not necessarily legitimately earned because he's an earl or a duke or he got it from his great-great-great-great-grandfather who stole it from the Normans or the Saxons or something, um, well then wealth, in the Proudhon, property is theft. And in Europe, a lot of property was theft. <laughs> okay. um, in the United States, because we take so many immigrants, it's a little hard to argue that you can't succeed when you see you know, five-year-old Cambodian children coming out of the uh, killing fields of Cambodia becoming the, the, the best speller in the country at age 12. Okay, that person could do it, and you're telling me that you can't get out of bed in the morning and go to work because life is unfair? Do you think it's nicer to be poor in Europe than it is in the United States? Nicer. Um, I don't know, maybe less dignity if the government's willing to do more for you. When people give you money for not working, it's destructive of human dignity and eventually destructive of human liberty. It turns people into lazy folks who don't want to accomplish anything and just sort of sit around. Why would you want to have anything to do with that? I don't believe in the American dream. You know, I really don't. I think that's just words, you know? In America, it became possible for the first time to argue that the rung of the ladder each person stood on accurately reflected their true qualities. Conveniently for the successful, this reduced the need for welfare, redistribution of wealth, or even simple compassion. Given this relentless logic, voices like Grover's will only grow louder. Damon!